The situation in the area of the city of Kurakov, Donetsk region, remains difficult. This was reported on air of Orest Drymalovsky, a representative of the press service of the 79th Separate Airborne Assault Brigade of Ukraine. It was as if the Tavaria paratroopers had opened some kind of portal to hell for the occupiers in the area of the village of Konstantinovka near Kurakov, he said. The source added that the Russians continue to enter there in whole columns. Recently, our soldiers burned two tanks and three armored fighting vehicles, along with the landing force, and damaged one vehicle. And this is not the first mechanized assault this week. This is already the third or fourth time that the Russians are using such large amounts of equipment. Some days ago, the Russians got a real beating. They lost 12 armored vehicles, including the very latest Terminator armored fighting vehicle, the pride of the Russian defense industry, said Drymalovsky. He noted that the invaders are attacking daily, trying to find weak spots in the Ukrainian line of defense in this direction. In addition, according to Drymalovsky, the occupiers are actively using armored vehicles there during assaults. In fact, they attack positions with numbers and do not spare their armor in these attacks. Apparently, it is very important for the occupiers to straighten the front line in the Kurokovo direction to push through the defense in the area of the villages of Konstantinovka, Antonovka, Yekaterinovka, where the enemy has not had success for a long time. And without this success, it will not be possible to advance deeper to the city of Kurokovo. According to him, this is why the enemy is throwing in huge forces. The occupiers' units are losing their combat capability. They are being brought in for rotation and new cannon fodder is arriving. Following their capture of Selidov, west of Donetsk, Russian forces have launched an operation to encircle Kurokov, a critical logistics hub for Ukrainian troops in southern Donbass. A Russian mechanized column has already pushed into the city's eastern outskirts, though not without equipment losses along the way. Additional Russian units are pressing in from the north and from the south, from the direction of Vuladar. Russian army has attempted to launch another attack on the country's Kursk region, where the Ukrainian troops launched incursion around three months ago. Russian soldiers advancing with armored personnel carriers were forced to retreat after facing serious resistance from Ukrainian fighters. The Ukrainian fighters, who were positioned in the forest strip, targeted Russians with various weapons and kamikaze drones. As a result, the Russian soldiers, who lost manpower and equipment, retreated. One of the armored vehicles of the retreating Russians was abandoned on the battlefield. Ukraine's defense forces assume that the Russian army, with the support of North Korean troops, will launch an offensive in the Kursk region within the next few days. The New York Times reports this with reference to the words of the deputy commander of Ukraine's 61st Mechanized Brigade, Lieutenant Colonel Artem Kolodkevich. According to the publication, Kolodkevich, who fought in the Kursk sector, said that his commanders had warned him that an assault might be imminent. 
we were warned of an attack in the near future, probably in the coming days, the Ukrainian lieutenant colonel said. At the same time as the publication writes, Russia has deployed about 50,000 troops in the Kursk region, while Ukraine has about 30,000 soldiers. According to experts, an additional 10,000 North Korean troops could allow Russia to gain the upper hand over Ukrainian forces. What usefulness North Korean troops will bring to the battlefield remains to be seen, experts say. Viktor Kevliuk of the Center for Defense Strategies says coordinating their actions with Russian troops will be difficult because they do not speak the same language, have different training and are unfamiliar with the terrain where they will be fighting. Former German ambassador to Washington Wolfgang Ischinger agrees with this opinion, emphasizing that this could become a huge headache for the Russian army, which is not accustomed to having large foreign units under its command. Thus, Viktor Kevliuk from the Center for Defense Strategies believes that North Korean troops will be used in attacks on Ukrainian positions in accordance with Russia's long-standing strategy to realize numerical superiority in personnel with artillery support. North Korean units will storm the most fortified positions of the Ukrainian and Russian regular troops will strengthen the captured objects and lines. At the same time, former British military attaché in Moscow and Kiev, John Foreman, believes that the North Koreans will remain on the defensive and strengthen the front line, leaving some Russian soldiers free for offensive operations. If they are used for direct attacks, he added, the reliability of North Korean forces will be questioned by the Russians and their use could endanger Russian forces. The Ukrainian army has also issued a Ukrainian-Korean phrasebook for its troops to reach out to North Korean soldiers and urge them to surrender, according to a Ukrainian officer who spoke anonymously.